reset your space, reset your mind, and then also set up an environment for yourself. Get as much organized as possible. Every person functions differently, and you have to find out for yourself. Like which is a good method yeah. for yourself. Hello everybody, welcome back to the new episode of La Copy with Henry and Mike. Today is the 22nd of December 2022. It is a Thursday. Thursday. It's a Thursday today. Yeah, and we are right now in Jewel. Changi Dish, Airport. At Changi Airport here in Singapore. And we are at this place called... Fun Toast. Fun Toast today. And we got ourselves Kopi O Kosong Gao, like a black coffee but it's not diluted with water. Mm -hmm. So it's a thicker version of long black Americano, basically. More concentrated, basically. Exactly. Yeah. So this is where we are today. And uh, how are you, Mike? So far, so good. This is uh, Thursday already. Almost coming to the week. And mm -hmm. I'm glad I woke up early this morning. You know, this morning when I came here, yep. the entire place was quiet. Mm -hmm. And then like uh, the waterfall yeah. was actually not functioning until 10 o'clock just now. So, so they have a timing for it. They have a timing for it. I thought it would be early that I can enjoy the peace, but yeah. there was no water in fact when I came. Okay. It's a good morning walk around the jewel myself. Mm -hmm. And then you came and then we had breakfast. It just, we're just going to start our kit chat today. Yeah. We'll catch up for the week. So how's the week then? So far, great. Yeah. I think this is like a second last week of the year for 2022, right? Yeah. Last night I went out with a friend mm -hmm. to chit chat just to catch up, to wrap up the year. Sadly, other friends couldn't join, but it was still okay. Yeah. And really just wrap up the year. Mm -hmm. Other than that, this week, still quite a fair bit of hospital run with mom. Yeah, yeah she's just uh, on the life cycle this week. Her situation is okay, I guess. You know, it's just like she's feeling a little bit more fatigued yeah. as usual, lack of energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm glad that this life cycle is coming to an end soon and she's still doing holding up well basically she's going to start her 10th cycle next week right yeah during the christmas week she will be starting on tuesday next week on I think. tuesday next yeah, week i'm going with her so that's for me this week so far how far are you prepared for your trip to melbourne you guys are living soon right yeah i think we are kind of packed we are living in two days time less than 48 hours in fact i'll be back here again and fly off to melbourne but cool anyway summer there so i don't think it's a lot of things to pack I just know that Melbourne's weather is a little bit erratic. During the daytime, it's pretty hot, like 20 odd degrees. But at night, it can go down to single digit, like 8 degrees or 7 degrees. So you got to just bring layers, basically. Exactly. And we're going on the Great Ocean Road, so it'll be definitely windy. Yeah, yeah for sure. I hope, just hopefully it doesn't rain. Yeah, so that's for me. How about you? I really have to think about it, like what happened this week. I mean, of course, I still go back to CrossFit every single day. I can feel like things are picking out again after my Thailand trip, you know. Okay. I think. For the Thailand trip, I only did manage two droppings and my whole stamina account dropped. Okay. And right now, I'm trying to be very consistent. So, I mean, I still go every week and do the training, but I can't give myself some slack in the sense of taking a break from my body. Okay. I want to be eventually build it up all the way to February because that's when the open will happen, mid of February. So, so you have release the, seven weeks to go, I know, guess. Yeah, around there. So they will release the program, the events, like what exercise you need to do. Okay. On the... After the Valentine's Day. I think Day, 17, basically. yeah. Okay. I think, yeah. And you've got the next four days to kind of complete that, to improve on your score. Okay. however you want. I see. Yeah. I have never done it before, so I only heard stories from people around. Some of them have done 9, 10, 11. Uh -huh. So they've been doing CrossFit for that period of time, you know, every single year to test against their own stamina. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'll just give it a try, even though there are a lot of exercise, I can't do it What's yet. the common challenges that people will mention when they go for this? You just have a lot of a lot of things that you can't do yet. I mean, for me, I have a lot of exercise and movement I can't do it yet. I need to unlock okay. them. I see. But I don't know how long it will take me. Like, I've been going to the gymnastic and weightlifting classes to learn a technique how to do it, let alone the weights itself, you see. I see. Like, yesterday, I did a deadlift two times maximum at 100%, right? Within yeah. 15 minutes, putting up to that. I managed to achieve 130 kilograms twice but the last part wasn't very clean so I need to practice a bit more but when I look at my development of the weights that I've been building out since joining this box I started with 60 I think oh so then you have double. double you have double yeah. yeah yeah but then I look at the leaderboard there are people who are doing 280 kilograms uh -huh. okay. okay, that's What's still it? a long way to go. I mean, by looking at the absolute weight, yes, I get it, the, the, the more the better, but do they weight it against your own weight? Let's say you're 100 and you're carrying like no, I 130. Think, I think the, how they do it is based on your your age, but I'm not oh, quite sure. Age. Yeah, okay. I'm very new to CrossFit. 
Anyway, so I'm preparing for that. Okay. But this other day, we have like a 12 days Christmas workout that's like 90 minutes long. I just registered that. Okay. The sports went off so quickly. There are three sessions, not altogether six sessions uh -huh. in two boxes here in Singapore, in their side. Each class is about 20 people, at least in this box that I'm going. On top of that, I went for a Christmas party by the box yeah. and that was quite fun so okay. we managed to catch up a little bit here and there with people we drank wine mm -hmm. we exchanged gifts Santa and the Santi <laughs> so how it works is like you have to ask questions of the person like try to guess who is the Santa so everyone else will ask you need to answer yes or no question okay. so it'll be like is this person a guy uh -huh. so the the person who's being asked will say yes or no okay so okay. all the questions become very creative to ask very personal uh -huh. things about this uh, secret First, center. Oh, okay, see. Okay. Yeah, I got a book. One of the books that I'm looking forward to read. Okay. What's the book about? Oh, what's being the title? You. Being You. Yeah, so that'll be my Christmas. Christmas book. read. Yeah, I've got a few books. I picked up one book in Thailand as well. I saw another book from Kino Kunia the other day. So okay. I think I'll read these three when during the Christmas period. Are they very similar categories? It's more about self-growth or fictions okay. and a bit of Japanese philosophy there, what what is Abi? Oh, we went for a Christmas Thai tea, remember? Oh, that yeah, was the highlight. Yeah, it was definitely a highlight. Exactly. So mom, I know that she wasn't feeling very well yeah. on the day itself, but she managed to go home to select like a very flowery dress for herself. Yeah. And put it on properly, you know, kind of accessorize herself and mm -hmm. like put on proper shoes instead of all the, you know, like very athletic kind of like very earthy yeah. clothes she has been wearing because of the hospital run, right? Yeah. So I think she really made an effort to go for the Christmas high tea with us. Mm -hmm. And that place was where? St. Regis uh, along Orchard Road. Yeah, it's in the in this hotel called St. Regis, uh -huh. uh, along Tenling Road. Yeah, Tenling. And then in one of these French cafe called Brasserie Les Savoirs. What, yeah. What's the meaning in French? Though? Brasserie is like a, like a cafe. Like mm -hmm. they sell coffee, food and stuff like this. Okay. I don't know what Savoir means, but it's just the name of something. Yeah. What's pretty good, the, high, the tea that we have drunk, Olong black tea. I got a jasmine tea as well. It's very, very flavorful. The sandwiches blend was really good. Yeah. Surprisingly good. Caroline had it because we, are, we were drinking the tea together with the sweet stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So that complements very well. So, I mean, the way they do the dessert, the dessert was very, very delicate. Mm -hmm. So there are three different layers. And you have the sandwiches, you have all the macarons. They're either coated in white chocolate or a different fruit flavor, but mixed with chocolate as well. So that's very intense flavor. And when you go with tea, it's just like perfect. Mm -hmm. So we sit there about two, almost three hours to just chit chat and savoring the moment. Enjoying yeah. our Christmas. So this is the first time I joined them because usually Christmas I'm not here in Singapore. Quite nice. I mean, it's a tradition you guys have been doing for a long time now. I think maybe for the last five years or so, yeah. I guess. Always the different, probably hotels or cafes around Singapore. So have tried different hotels here in Singapore already? Yeah. So far, I think the best that we really, really like the ambiance is the one that it's at Scott Square, I think. So that was very good because it was set up in a library kind of side yeah. idea. As you really have a proper table to mm. sit down with books around and then you just chit chat away. That's something that's very unusual because usually if you go to a cafe, it's really like a restaurant setting. Yeah. So we really enjoyed that. I think that was like two, two to three years back. I, I love that place. If you have chance, we can actually go. It's still around today. And of course, we took the iconic shot with the Christmas, Christmas tree. tree. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. That was definitely a highlight for the last weekend because Christmas is not going to be around. So yeah. kind of marked like a Christmas celebration this year for the family. How are you feeling this week then? Okay. Actually, I have a story to share. Basically, I am actually coaching one of a student right, in Mandarin Chinese. Mm -hmm. So he's 15 this year. He just went to Japan for his holiday. Okay. So he came back. So I asked him to write me a letter because mm -hmm. you know, as a power assessment, usually they need to write some kind of email or letter to elaborate on their experiences. Yeah. Yeah. So I asked him as a practice. So he wrote to me like what he did there. Mm -hmm. And then finally we had a lesson with him. I asked him, so I read, you have gone to this place, this place, this place. And he loved owl, you know, Mount Hoeing a lot. So I said, okay, you show me some photos. It's great. So how do you feel now? Because that was only like maybe like 300 words. So it's too short. Yeah. And then he told me like, I really love Japan. I really love the time with family, but I need some help. And I said, what help do you need? And he said that holiday comes very fast and it goes very fast. Is there like a way for me to wrap up everything 
That's why he asked me. He's only 15 years old. He's 15. Old. Because he said that I'm not ready for 2023. Wow. And I feel like I've just gone for the holiday. And when I'm back, the year is going to end in a week's time. And I don't feel ready for next. And I haven't even settled everything this year. You know, like my files are everywhere. My documents were everywhere. Homeworks are not done, all this kind of thing. So he asked me whether there's a way, I don't know, as somebody who has studied before, like what do I do? Or is there any advice you can give? Mm -hmm. So I told him, well, it's very simple. You just got to reset your physical space as a basic thing first. So things like, you know, fold up your stuff. Because his file, his things are really everywhere. So when I asked him like, can you pick up this thing from this chapter? And then he'll give me five minutes, let me go and dig. It just shows that, you know, you have not put, do a proper housekeeping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so things like keeping your desk, getting your stationery, your books ready. Yeah, so keep your environment clean first. Yeah. Keep up. The second thing I told you is about your mind. That's important. You are everywhere. You feel very messy. So you need to settle whatever to-do list that you have to clear for the year. And then all the administrative stuff, like things like classes you need to sign up for next year, yeah. or even like getting your books, all this, go and settle so that you'll be out of your way. And then the next thing you do about your mind as a step two is to really plan ahead. Like, okay, when's your exam is gonna come? When exactly will your next CCA meeting is gonna be? All this kind of stuff. And I share with you a quote. I said that, you know, there's this very famous US Admiral from the Navy, William McRaven. I know what you wanna say, yeah. Yes. I told him that in the military, like how we usually do it when we wake up, is to make a bed. Yeah. I see that that is actually the most important thing as a first step. He asked me why. And I told him like the moment you make your bed, it takes less than two minutes. Mm -hmm. And then you're set for the day. Yeah. That's the very first mini task that you can do. I actually saw that video. I mean, many years ago, it was circulating around. And ever is since I saw- that he gave He gave a speech at a graduation yes. of yes, his yes. son, I think. Yeah. Once I saw that, I thought that was a very good practice. So I started to practice that. And every single morning I wake up, that's the mm -hmm. first thing I do. No matter how rushed I will be- You'll make your bed, right? I'll make my yes. bed. So there are three things I do before I go to bed. Yeah. I will pack my bag for the next day. No matter how tired I am, I will do it. Because I know like in the morning, I'll be always in a rush. And, and second of, and I'll even put the shoes and everything properly. Like, what's the step? I need to go to the door to open the, the gates to get out. <laughs> I will put everything properly. So I just go okay. through the flow, you know. Okay. So I pack my bag. Mm -hmm. I'll write down my to-do list for the next day. And afterwards, I'll go to sleep. When I'm lying down, I will kind of reflect a little bit what I've done today. Mm -hmm. And then I will think about what are the steps I need to take for the next day when I wake up. So I wake up at 5, 5.20, I need to leave the house. So you got 20 minutes in between to get myself, you know, pretty and get myself ready. It's like a dry run in your mind, yeah. right? Like, so how am I going to proceed there? Five, six, yeah. And then get out of the bed and then walk through the park and get to the MRT station and take the exact same time. <laughs> MRT <laughs> station. Very, sounds like a very German thing to do. <laughs> yeah, MRT station and go to either Clark Key or China. Most of the time, Chinatown now station. Yeah. About 45 minutes right. And then I know like which carriage I can get a seat. So once I sit down, I can I then read my book or listen to podcasts and have that moment or review my video. So I'll have every single little step kind of like thought through when I'm lying down on bed, do the review of the day, what I have done. I'll do that, try to do that as much as I can because sometimes I'm really too exhausted, I'll just fall asleep. But most of the time I manage to do that. Also, when I wake up, the first thing I do is to fold my bed. Yes. No matter what I do. And then to make yeah. sure that it's very particularly folded nicely. Yeah. I said, okay, I've done something, achieved something today. Actually, I concur with this point because that's yeah. really the first lesson when I when I was 18, when I went to the military. The yeah. first thing they screw us upside down is this thing. Uh -huh. They want to make sure that the first task you do on a daily basis yeah. is done properly, even though it's small. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of times, even Admiral Mac, uh, McRaven also mentioned, if you screw up a lot of things during the day, when you go to your bed at the end of the day, at least you know your bed is done up nicely. You have achieved something immediate tick for you yeah so i told him that you know i told this this student of mine saying that you should start doing this as a basic practice yeah. and then once you get the engine started ball rolling you will come you know so these small little steps uh, is important and also told him very important you need to create an environment for yourself let's say when you're doing work if you are very attuned to some cute music for example have a study playlist you trick your brain okay when i hear this type of music or this particular soundtrack or this playlist, mm -hmm. it's time to get a work. Yeah. Or you can even create scents. 
like for example at home, mm -hmm. when it's time to wind down for instance, what I'll do is to put the diffuser on, yeah. so I know it's okay, it's time to wind down for the day. Same can be utilized, mm -hmm. you know, for you to try to set a scent for a specific task that you're doing, yeah. you know, like studying or maybe like doing housework or all this kind of stuff. I told him that the key word to you is housekeeping. If you don't do your housekeeping, it's very difficult for you to wrap up the year and then prepare for the next. Yeah. So those are the three points of doing. Mm -hmm. How did he receive that? It took him a bit of time to understand like what I'm trying to tell him because he just wanted to know like how to get on. But when I told him, I broke it down into three steps, you know, like reset your space, reset your mind, and then also set up an environment for yourself. And then he was like, hmm, I didn't think about it that way. Let me try to digest it. I've yet to follow up with him. I'll have another lesson for the next few weeks. Yeah. And then I'm going to just check in with him, like how are you doing? Have you actually purchased all your stationery, your notebooks, thought out everything? Are we ready for 2023 together? I think the main point here is to get as much organized as possible. Mm. Sometimes the idea is such very daunting because there's so many steps to it. You know, even for myself, when I think about what I need to do the next day and what are the steps, how do I do it? It always takes me some time, like some mental strength there to really think it through. I'm that kind of person where but I'm not very structured. I learned to be structured later in life, mm -hmm. in adult, my adult life, especially in Germany. But I also give myself some slacks there. I need to be flowy. You know, otherwise when it's too restricted, too strengthened, I won't be able to function and I'll have a very bad feeling towards the end of the day that I did not achieve what I set out myself how to mm -hmm. do today. So there are a lot of things that it's also important to prioritize what's important for you in a day, to put it on your to-do list, and also when exactly are you going to do that. So there's always a time for it in the morning mm -hmm. or in the afternoon, in the evening. Yeah. So every person is kind of function differently. Are you prepared for next year? Mm, not 100% as why, well. Why Why is that so? I think there are still some things that I am thinking about, mm -hmm. which I think I will take the chance in Melbourne yeah. to sort it out, you know, in the, put myself in the environment. So yeah. it's kind of a little bit like give yourself that space and environment, put yourself in that. Mm -hmm. So this trip is kind of good for that. How should I be planning? I do have a rough plan, but some of the details are not out. Yeah. So I plan to take the next week or so when I'm in Melbourne to drop down some of this stuff so that it'd be more complete but I can wrap up the year proper. Yeah. Sounds good. I'm also planning to do that properly. I have a few of these like New Year uh, aims or wishes I've jotted down you know, as I go along, go through the day. I want to like put it properly mm -hmm. on paper on my diary and look at it as an overview. Mm -hmm. So I'll do it before the end of the year. I'll try to find days I can do that between Christmas and New Year. It's also together 12 days, right? 12 days, yeah. to be exact. I want to do that. What makes you happy? What makes you smile? Time spent with people that matters. This never changed. Why is that so? I think it's just a joy doing things that each other enjoy. Like for example, like mom loves to hike, right? So when I do that with her particularly, it brings me a lot of joy. I can do a lot of things with mom, you know, cooking, all that kind of stuff. But when I go and hike with her, that's where a lot of conversations will take place. You can feel the deeper connection yeah, that your, your usual time that you don't really feel. And mm. I treasure that and that brings me a lot of joy and happiness. How do you think about this happiness thing? Though? I think about things I like to do, how it makes me feel the moments after. And literally it puts a smile on my face. Like CrossFit is one of them, I guess. Yes, and then also spending time with family. Yes. Friends, like really, really good friends. Mm -hmm. I do miss Barry and Mona a lot. We were just talking the last two days as well. Okay. Yeah, they were telling me how cold it is in Germany at the moment. And I was looking through all those footages I've taken. It's just such um, a great memory, you know. And I do appreciate it because, you know, with good friends, you really make time for each other once a year at least. To spend really quality time together. It can be just hanging out in a hotel room and doing singing or just chatting and eating snacks. But that's such a quality time with each other. Yeah. I think the quality time for each relationship, be it whether it's kinship or yeah. friendship or any other kind of relationship is different. I really agree with what you said about, you know, just doing what you guys always do and feel comfortable and you deem it as quality mm -hmm. time. So for instance, last night when I went out with a friend of mine, the usual quality time that we do is of course to talk. But how do we do it? We visit the supermarket to actually buy some groceries or shop. Or if let's say we don't want to buy anything, we just walk in and see stuff. And then it took us maybe half an hour to go inside the entire supermarket. Yeah. And we just chit chat. So that is the environment we set up. And then mm -hmm. we also enjoy each other's company in that setting. People will be wondering, supermarket was there, just buy and go, right? But it's the same thing as you when you are... It's with, actually the process itself. Yeah, it's the process. Yeah. You, know? you always have a media and you go through that medium. But at the same time, what you're achieving is something that's intangible. Mm -hmm. It's just so unique to their relationship. Yeah. You know? I do agree with that point. So, that concludes the episode for this week. The words for this week are... Reset for me. And organize for me. Don't forget to subscribe to Luck Coffee with Henry and Mike. 
and be kind to yourself, take care of each other, and don't forget to smile. This is Henry. This is Mike. We shall see you in the next episode. Ciao, ciao. Tschüss. Bye.